I am very excited to have this panel. Um, and as uh, you've seen all of these speakers speak um, in the last two days, so we have Gabriel Cousins, Brenda Davis, Anna Marie Clement, and Brian Clement. So this is actually very unusual. You're looking at 200, you know, virtually almost 200 years of raw food experience. It's, you know, a lot of experience, 150 to 200 years. So there's a lot of knowledge here. Um, and these are people that don't have theoretical knowledge. These are people that um, Gabriel at the Tree of Life and Brian Anna Marie, Maria at Hippocrates have had guests coming to them for you know, the last 40 years. Um, so, and Brenda does intense research. So this is not theoretical. It's not just quoting someone else. This is really hardcore what it takes to affect your health. Now, the conference sort of has a funny title, the, the panel. It's called Diabetes. What are the best scientific and nutritional studies ever done? Tell us about how to prevent and reverse diabetes. But you could take the word diabetes out and put all your other health issues in, and the recommendations they're making are similar. In other words, they're not saying this is the diabetes diet, but the cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's diets are totally different. The stuff that they're recommending will be very beneficial for all health issues. So um, to get started, um, why don't we just frame what's going on? I'd like if you would just say, this, if there's 320 million people in America, the first question most people are going to say is, well, does this affect me? So if diabetes has nothing to do with them, they might not be that interested. So is, does this have anything to do with anyone? Is this just some small group of people that have it? Or who actually has diabetes? Who's going to get diabetes? That's, so who has it? Who's going to get it? And then even if they do, is it really so bad? Like it doesn't, you know, type 2 diabetes, it sounds like, I don't know. So who, does this affect us, the people watching it? Do we need to be concerned? How many people have it? Who's going to get it? And what actually happens when you have type 2 diabetes? Because to a lot of people it doesn't sound that bad. So, I would have it answered. Is my phone on? Could you hear me? Okay, good. Well, the data is pretty overwhelming, okay? Uh, Twenty-seven percent of the people who are 65 years and older have over type 2 diabetes. That's a lot, right? That's more than 25, that's more than a quarter of the population. And the population is increasing in age. I didn't say get older, I said increasing in age, okay? <laughs> the, sec <coughs> the second thing, is 10% of people 20 to 60 have diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So that's important. Probably the biggest statistic is a one-third of the people from 20 to 60 years old are pre-diabetic. Generally speaking, pre-diabetes has many of the degenerative effects of people with full-on diabetes. That's not so good. That's a third of the population between 20 and 60. Now, the second part of that question is the bad news. <laughs> the chronic degenerative diabetes syndrome that I'm talking about is a serious degeneration in many of our organ systems, our vision, our brain function, our neurological function, our digestion. Uh, the tendency for depression. It just there it goes on and on. But the cardiovascular. cardiovascular, what, two to four times higher rate of heart attacks. So it's pretty broad spread. Basically, diabetes is accelerated aging. So if you think that you don't care about the fact that you're aging, that's a big deal. Once you get diabetes, but even the pre-diabetes, in about 15 years, all those kinds of things start to manifest, including sexual function, because you have decreased circulation to the sexual, to the genital areas. So it has a major impact on your physical function, and I'm going to say, based on my observation, a major impact on your mental functioning, your cognition significantly decreases. So it's a lose, 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 lose all the way down the line. So it really affects people on every level. 
and it takes about 15 years to get it. So if you're a 10-year-old, by the time you're 25, your life is over, functionally. That's what that means. And I'd just like to add one other point. I don't know if my mic's on. Oh, now it is, I think. Uh, that uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics just released their, I think last year, their, their position statement on diabetes, and one of the, one of the stats they included was that um, American adults now 49 to 52% of American adults have either type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. And of course, as Dr. Cousins was saying, prediabetes is, will turn into diabetes in fairly short order in most people. So, and I was just absolutely stunned when I saw that stat, uh, that we're talking half the uh, adult population. Frightening. And we see that at, at our work, of course, all the, every day we see that. And, you know, you have something that's totally curable, diabetes type 2, absolutely totally curable. I wish everything else could be told that you were totally curable. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that is one thing. If you have diabetes type 2, it's absolutely curable. But there are steps, and we will talk about that today, um, there are steps you need to take. And it actually kills one American every three minutes. It's due to everything Gabriel said, cardiovascular, this, that. And, um, you know, then you have, so you have diabetes type 1, you have diabetes type 2, you have gestational diabetes that a lot of women get while they're pregnant. And why does that happen? Suddenly it happens because we're pregnant? No, because we eat junk and we don't eat well when we're pregnant. That is a time that even more precious that we eat well. And then you have diabetes type 3, which is actually called dementia, Alzheimer, because you make insulin in your brain, in the hippocampus, which is the learning and memory center. And if that goes down the drain, so does our memory. And so there's a lot <coughs> of reasons to cure yourself from this. And you will realize that oh, okay. what spikes insulin more than anything else is animal products. So Go vegan, that's the first thing you have to do. You have to go vegan. Let me, let me broaden this outside of America. This is an international audience. Uh, we don't want to constantly say America this, America that. Uh, we've been great at exporting a lot of things out of this country over the years, but what we exported is a lot of crappy food. So this is not just an American phenomenon. As a matter of fact, we have more obese people in Mexico, our neighbor, than we do. When I used to go to France 30, 40 years ago, I didn't see chubby people, and now 20% of their population is. And diabetes is growing worldwide. So I'd like to tell you that. In the South Pacific, where they're pretty much on plant-based diets, they're not eating an awful lot of junk food like we are. They're eating a lot of palm oils. And our forests are being knocked down for those palm, uh, palm oils. But let me also explain what, how serious this is in the context of how recently this has occurred. When I peruse medical literature from the beginning of the 20th century, it was not even mentioned type 2 diabetes. It was such a rarity, and it was only with a, a, a fractional, fractional part of the aristocracy that would contract this, and they didn't even know what it was at that point. People would probably die or have a heart attack, or have a kidney failure, or go blind, and they thought the spirits did it to them. So it was not even mentioned a century ago. To top it all off, when I was at school, they used to call it adult onset diabetes. It was pretty easy then. It was wrong, but it was easy. They said if you're 27 and below, you have type 1 diabetes. If you're 27 and above, you have type 2 diabetes. So it was easy to be an authority then, because we'd say, oh, you're 26 and 3 quarters, <laughs> you have type 1. 27, you have type 2. That's wrong. That's really wrong. Uh, as you heard Anna Maria say yesterday, there's direct research, not clear research, not one or two studies, many studies, that show gluten and celiac allergies contribute to type 1 diabetes. And there's a slew of other things. And as Gabriel just mentioned in his presentation, Pesticides, fungicides, er herbicides, genetically modified food do. This is a whole new experiment. We have just tried in the last generation or two. Then to top the whole darn thing off, it went from nothing 100 years ago to being the fastest growing disease that we have to concern ourselves with today because it creates the most demise. It's the disease that kills you 
only second to heart attacks and strokes, which often are caused by blood sugar conditions. Actually, in 1920, only one case was reported. One case. <laughs> 1920, that that's 100 years ago, just like what you said. <laughs> Not, they, they did report one case. Yeah. <laughs>